we're going to take a look at the Lang 279 brake caliper press. Now, I bought this off of Amazon, so I didn't pay that much. Did you see there? Now this pad measures four and a half by two and three eighths. The approximate minimum width, the outside minimum width, is one and eleven sixteenths. Your approximate maximum width to the outsides is three inches, and that's really pushing it. And I'll show you why, because it's just to where these just engage threads. So that is your absolute, really, I'd call it less than three, but uh, you know, that's that's the maximum that you're probably going to get pushing against threads. Let's examine these. You'll notice that this side is threaded smaller than the opposite side. And as would make sense, this pad has the larger thread. This side has the smaller thread. Now before I go any further, I just thought I'd point out, and I'm not sure why really, I don't see the reason, but there must be something for this. But the larger size, side had this O-ring over here. And I ended up taking it off. What I was finding is that when you would snug it up, it would just take and kind of compress this and kind of squeeze it out a little bit. And like I said, I didn't see any difference trying it with and without that O-ring. So you guys may find it, uh, you know, different than me. But I, like I said, I just took it out. So I just wanted to point it out. So if somebody's got one, they say, well, hey, you know, where's that O-ring? So that's the reason I took mine out. And on the other side, it has a uh, nylon washer, and I just kept that in there. So the secret to this, this stud has right-hand threads. So as you know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Right-hand threads here, left-hand threads here. So, to turn this on, okay, with right-hand threads, you would turn it clockwise. To engage the threads here, you have to turn it counterclockwise. To engage the threads here, being right-hand threads, it's the standard turn right. Now, once you get this sized to the your, your caliper inside the caliper and you want to spread the pistons, okay, the pressure between these as you go to ratchet, you can see it spreads the pads. Now, what you might have to do initially to get these to contact, you might have to hold this. Just put your thumb on one of, on either side of this just to hold that. Once it makes contact on the sides, just the mere pressure pushing the pistons back in. Okay, one side will be on the firm side of the caliper with the ears. The other side would be up against your either single or dual caliper. So now, as you can see, Spreads apart because of the right and left hand threads, the opposing sides, which causes the piston to be taken back into the bore. Next we're going to take a look at 
an actual example of this in a caliper forcing the pistons back into their bores. Okay, so let's retract those pistons. To back this out, to loosen it, just take that cam here. And as you can see, goes back together. Hopefully this video helped in case anybody had any questions as to uh, how it worked, uh, any of the uh, various dimensions, and um, works pretty damn nice.